Hi, welcome to the Holiday Park United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Pat Nelson. It's good to have you here. Come on in and look around. We have a lot of great people who love Jesus and are growing in their faith. We would love to have you join us for worship and join us in serving the Lord. You may be seated. Well, uh, before we get started here, uh, well, everyone is welcome here, of course, at the 8.30 service and 10 o'clock, but before we get started with the rest of the announcements on our worship service, we are pleased and honored to have Pastor Augie Twig with us today. So, uh, yeah, well, yeah, oh, got a woo-hoo from the choir there, I don't know, okay. Glad he's here, all right. Well, thank you for everyone being here, and of course, everyone who is in our YouTube uh, congregation today. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we have Sunday school available after the uh, children's sermon at 10 o'clock here today. And of course, our nursery is available for babies through two at the 10 o'clock hour. News and activities, please go to our Facebook page or our web page. That's the best sources for the current activities going on in your church. Uh, we have a new thing here. It's young married couples. I don't think I qualify. Uh, Young Married Couples, small group uh, meet and greet that's going to be hosted by Jesse and Zach Nelson. It's date Sunday, December 4th, two hours, 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, the location is their Murraysville home. Uh, their telephone number is there because they'd like you to RSVP before November the 30th, and then you can find out where they live. But it's in Murraysville, so it's not too far away. This would be for young marrieds, uh, newly or going to be, for instance, uh, uh, just that group of uh, people to get together and see if there's some activities and things they want to get together and do. Uh, so Jesse and Zach are going to try to facilitate that. So please give Jesse and Zach a call and uh, let them know that you are available for that endeavor on December 4th. Uh, of course, our Operation Christmas Shout is uh, still uh, in swing here. We have collection containers out in the lobby. Please keep buying the merchandise uh, for those uh, containers, bring them in, and this uh, mentions the packing party on November 6th at 6 p.m. in Wesley Hall. You're all invited to come and help. Uh, there'll be pizza, I think, and beverages for that. So please come down. Uh, uh, Jillian and uh, Maddie are doing a great job with this, and, they, and our elves need some more help. So help them uh, collect the info, collect them, help them collect the merchandise as well as come down and help pack the boxes. Uh, we have a Philippi kickoff breakfast. Not really a Philippi kickoff, but it's to find out more about Philippi, whether you've been there to Philippi or want to go to Philippi. You should come to the breakfast this Saturday, November 19th at 10 a.m. Uh, there will be pictures. There will be lots of folks there uh, with Philippi experience, so you can probably get any of your questions uh, answered. Uh, please, parents, bring your kids. Kids, bring your parents. But this is for uh, people who want to know more about Philippi. But uh, please come to breakfast. Uh, uh, Dave Schrader mentioned, hey, it's free. So uh, free and food, those two words go together very well. So uh, please come and uh, do that on Saturday. Uh, we are going to try to have a family Wednesday, uh, December uh, 7th. Uh, we want that to be a Christmas-based in-house talent kind of a thing. So uh, whether you juggle, whether you sing, whether you uh, play guitar, whatever, let Casey know so that we can start to get a lineup uh, assembled so that we can have uh, uh, our Wednesday, uh, family Wednesday on December 7th. There will be dinner at 6 p.m. Uh, before that, but we want to have a nice Christmas-themed uh, family Wednesday, so please uh, sign up for that. 
Uh, the angel tree, I think I still saw it in the, in the lobby out there. It has ornaments on it. Uh, you're supposed to take an ornament, buy a gift card for any amount from anywhere, and bring it back before December 5th. Now, these are uh, gift cards that will benefit the uh, families of the children, families of the youth, uh, youth of the families of the food pantry. Thank you very much, the clientele. So uh, I'll get it right. I'll get it right. Uh, I'm here all week. So uh, please uh, pick an ornament and uh, make that make all those ornaments gone before you leave today, off of that tree. Okay. So we didn't forget. Uh, Veterans Day was uh, Friday. It's always hard. When to when do we do that? Do we do it at the beginning of the week? The Sunday before? The Sunday after? Well, we chose a Sunday after for, for now. So if any of you who have served in our armed forces, if you're here, please stand just for a moment of, a moment of recognition, please. Thank you very much, Larry. Jill and, Jill and Jim, thank you very much. Walt back here and, and Paul, thank you very, very, very much. Uh, so this, uh, this message is for you guys and girls. You risked your life so we could experience freedom. You left your family so we could be with ours. You sacrificed it all for the greater good. You have stood up so that we can have freedom and liberty. You are the heroes of our nation. You have served our country honorably and we thank you for your sacrifice. If you want to continue your Veterans Day and Thanksgiving celebration, you may go where, Carol? Murraysville First Presbyterian Church. What time? Four o'clock today. There's going to be a, the Murraysville Cantata Choir, which is a community choir. Uh, there's going to be members uh, in that choir from our our place. There'll be uh, uh, Carol and Tom. There'll be Jim and uh, Linda Branson, and I think uh, uh, Diane, Debbie Miller will also be in that choir. So if you want to, what's that? It's fr and it's free. <laughs> Key word today, it's free. So if you want to continue that celebration for your veterans and for Thanksgiving, please, please go watch uh, the Murraysville Community Choir today. <laughs> All right. All right. So now, now, obviously, we've been talking about Lucy and Tom leaving. It's going to be uh, no the November 27th. We're going to celebrate, not celebrate them leaving, but celebrate their time. They, they were with us here. And there'll be a collection box for cards and well wishes and whatnot. You can put those in so they can take those with them. But that'll be December, November 27th, November 27th at the 10 o'clock service. So please make plans to be here for that. Uh, we do need your prayers. So this past uh, weekend, uh, John Lloyd passed away. John Lloyd was, An was Ann Klingler's brother. He had had a long, uh, a long battle with some illnesses, uh, but he had passed away. There was a viewing and a funeral this week in Coalport, PA. So please keep the Lloyd family and uh, the Klingler family in your prayers at this time. And now I think uh, we'll, I'll have <laughs> Bill Werkheiser. You thought I forgot his name, didn't you? If you are able, please stand and join me in the call of worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord your God. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Let us sing together hymn number 89, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
join me. How can we worship you, O holy God? You are perfect and we are far from it. We are sinful people and cannot approach you. We know the wages of sin is death. If we confess our sins, you are faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We come in name of Jesus to receive remission of our sins, to be filled with your spirit and to offer our redeemed worship to you. In the name of Jesus, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Please be seated for the Old Testament reading. Our reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verses 17 through 25. For behold, I created new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be re remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or a man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build another inhabit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant or another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or build children for calamity, for they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together, the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in my holy mountain, says the Lord. Good morning. I brought a little treat for you. Grandpas tend to do that kind of thing, right? And um, why don't you take one for each year you are old? Because today's your birthday, right? Yeah. Yes. It's our birthday. <laughs> How about you can have oh, four or five and pass them around. <clears throat> I, I want you to know that God knows the numbers of hair on your head. God knows exactly how many hairs are on your head. Well, that's easy for you to say. Why do you say that, Shanks? Why do you say it's easy for me to say? Well, one two <laughs> that's it <laughs> very funny shanks very funny but god not only can count the number of hairs on my head god can count the number of hairs on your head your head your head your head god knows it and shanks god knows the number of hairs on your head my head yes shanks but let me ask you this if i took the time to count your shagginess what would you think? I'd think that's crazy. Well, it is crazy. But think about this. If I took the time to count all your shreds of shagginess, that would mean that I was paying a lot of attention to you, right? Yes, that's true. And if I would take the time to count all these strands, then wouldn't that mean that I spent time with you? Well, yes, that's true. And the other thing is, Shanks, it means I'm crazy about you. So what's your response to that? Oh, I love you. And that's our response to God. God loves us and knows everything about us. And so we love God. God loves you more than you can imagine. More than anything, God's crazy about you. God really is. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for loving us, for knowing everything there is about us, and loving us so much that your love never, ever ends. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Well, we're going to sing a little chorus. Jesus, 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 
there's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. Calm us, O oh God, in this house of worship. Tune our hearts to you. You are ever more ready to speak than we are to listen. And you are ever more ready to hear our prayers than we are to pray. And as we come to you today, O oh God, offering up these prayers, we recognize that we bring with us many needs. We live in a fallen world, a world that you love so much that you gave your only begotten Son that whoever would believe in you would never perish but have everlasting life. And yet the world goes on living like it doesn't know you and that they don't care about you. And because of that, we have wars and rumors of wars. We have divisions and strife. So we bring to you this hurting world of ours, the poverty, the devastation from storms, the needs that are so obvious as we listen to the news. And we ask, O oh God, that you would be at work in those situations, bringing your love, bringing your care, raising up those who would address them. We pray for our nation. We've been through such a contentious election and still the problems go on. We pray that our leaders would come to recognize and obey you, that they would come to hold your values in their hearts and that this nation would cling to the Judeo-Christian values upon which it was established. We thank you today for our veterans, those who have served, who signed that life check and went off somewhere, even in this country, to protect us, to defend our freedoms. And we do pray, O oh God, your blessings upon them. We come to you on behalf of our church here and for Pastor Pat and her family, and we pray for them. Give wisdom, O oh God, strength, and help. We pray for this church and for churches in this community and for churches all around the world. We pray for our denomination. We lift up to you pastors and congregations and ask for you to work through them and with them. And as we gather in this place, we bring to you our individual needs. There are those among us who are grieving, those among us who are physically hurting, so those who are struggling emotionally, and those with spiritual needs. We pray for one another as we have gathered in this place, uniting our hearts and minds in prayer, offering up to you ourselves and then, Lord, we want to give you our thanks. Thanks for hearing our prayers. Thanks for ask, answering them, even when that answer is not what we have sought. For we have come to believe and know that your will is what is best, and you are ever watching for your children's good. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Of all the gifts that God has given to us, the best, the one he had only one of, his son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. But God has given us so more, much more than just his son. And now with grateful hearts, we return a portion to him that God's work may continue in this place and through these people. God from whom all blessings flow, praise Him. tithes, offerings, and gifts, asking your blessing, your moving, your will to be accomplished. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated.
Thank you, choir. Enjoyed very much hearing you again. And um, I have to say, the last time that I was here, the, the choir wasn't singing in the season. And um, it, it's harder to preach when you aren't there. <laughs> so th thank you. And uh, thank you for your ministry. And Bill, thank you for your ministry. Uh, the passage that I'm going to share with you is from Ephesians. And uh, it is uh, from the third chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. And the word of God says this. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I want to share with you some things. I, uh, I like trivia. I like science. Uh, but I'll tell you at the beginning of this, mathematics is not my strong point. Uh, so there are going to be numbers here that I have no idea what they mean. I'm just reporting them to you. Uh, it used to be sermon preparation was a lot harder than now because now you can Google, Google stuff, you know, if you want to know something. Like I wanted to know uh, the average number of leaves that are on a mature tree, and I Googled it, 150 to 200,000 leaves on a mature tree. And I read some time ago that on a maple tree that all of the leaves are arranged in such a way that during the day each one of them receives sunlight. That's the creator at work. That's God's hand. Uh, my wife was the pastor of Otterbein United Methodist Church. Uh, she is off preaching now uh, at uh, Madison Hilltop for the pastor who had surgery this week. And uh, while she was there, they fulfilled a project that they had set forth before she was there. Uh, before she arrived at uh, that church, they were doing the Operation Project Shoebox, uh, Operation Christmas Child. And uh, that year, the project had sent a million boxes. And the kids wanted to know, when it was reported to them that all the churches all over the place had given a million boxes, how much is a million? So they started asking, what can we save that will show the children what a million is. So they save pennies. Now, they put them in those water jugs, you know, that they carry in and put upside down, you know, that kind of thing. You had to have a dolly to move them. They were that heavy. And they had to put them in a secure place because by the time they were done collecting them, it was $10,000, a million pennies. And uh, they gave that to, to missions, of course. Uh, and uh, my wife had told them that if they would raise that much money if they would complete that task that she would be the pink punk pastor uh, so she borrowed some leather stuff from a friend of mine and, and her youth workers put her hair pink and there is a picture that I pull out every once in a while to bribe her with you know and she's <laughs> but think about Elon Musk for instance now he wouldn't have trouble getting together a million pennies he's worth supposedly 250 billion although you wonder if after his takeover of Twitter if he's still worth that much is the way things go and we may think of that as a lot but think about this there are insects on the face of this earth there are different types there are 900,000 different types of insects and if you count up the individual insects, now here's the time to get heebie-jeebies, folks. Ten quintillion, that's ten, followed by 18 zeros. Insects <laughs> all over the world, yeah. But let's think about something more pleasant, about stars, for instance. Now, there are about 10 billion galaxies in the observable universe. And each one of those may have an average of about 100 billion stars per galaxy. And that means there's 100 billion trillion, one with 21 zeros, stars that we know about. 
And what it says in the Bible is that God not only knows those stars by name, but he placed them there. Tells you something about our creator, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And then let's think about something down to earth, about sand, for instance. If you calculate how many grains of sand are on the beaches and in the deserts in this world, you come up with 7 quintillion 500 quadrillion grains of sand. I, I can't do that. Uh, it, uh, I, it doesn't register with my brain. I can't count that high. I can't think that high. Like I said, I'm not a mathematician. But the 139th Psalm declares this, that God knows you. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. Now, if you live to be 80 years old, that means that you've lived over 2.5 billion seconds and more than 8 billion times every second God is thinking of you. The fastest thing that we know is the speed of light. That's 186,000 miles per second. God's thoughts to you are faster and more. God not only is constantly thinking about you, he is far more abundantly thinking about you than we can even conceive. That's our God. Does that make you feel special? It should. Now, most of the time, we don't recognize the abundance that God has placed all around it, let alone the excess that is in this world, nor do we, do we grasp what Jesus said when he said, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Abundance could be God's middle name. There was a big brother who liked to pick on his younger brother. Uh, that happened to any of you? Any of you have an older brother pick on you? I had four older brothers, and they liked to pick on me and show what an idiot I was, different kinds of ways. Well, there, there's a story about this older brother who would, when he had friends over, would call his younger brother to him and say, here's a dime and a nickel, which one do you want? And the little boy would pick the nickel. You've probably heard this story, right? And one day one of the friends of the older brother took the little brother aside and said, listen, he's making a fool of you in front of all of us. He thinks that you don't know that a dime is worth more than a nickel. The boy said, I do know that a dime is worth more than a nickel, but if I pick the dime, he'll stop giving me nickels. <laughs> Choices. Choices. We make them every day. Life gives us lots of choices, doesn't it? We as Christians are called by Jesus to choose to lay up treasure that can't be taken from us. Jim Elliott was a missionary who was sent to uh, the tribes in South America. He was born in 1927 and he died in 1956, so he did not live to be, live to be a very old man. And he was martyred at the very hands of those he went to proclaim the gospel. Too. Shortly before his death, he penned these words that were found in his diary. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Let me repeat that. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. And we know Jesus' words to us that say, take up your cross and follow me to lay down our lives we can't keep our lives no matter what we do, no matter how many years we live, we eventually surrender them. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Today I hope that we can understand what it is that we receive in Jesus Christ when we do this very thing. That Ephesians passage is wonderful to me. I love words. I told you I'm not a mathematician, but I do love words. And uh, there are so many phrases in this passage that are just wonderful. It talks about the riches of his glory. It talks about power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, you know, all of it, the love of God that surpasses knowledge. The, to be filled with all the fullness of God, uh, now to him who is at work by the, uh, the power at work within us that we can accomplish abundantly far more than all we could ask or imagine. You see how lifted up that language is, how grand that language is. What 
do we receive in this passage? Things beyond our imagination, actually, it says. And it says to all generations, not just then, but now. Well, we might ask what kind of op optimist wrote this passage. Who was this guy who had lived such a coddled life that he thought everything was always so good and there was so much of everything that he never was denied anything and that he never lacked, he never wanted. Well, how rosy were his glasses? I will tell you, they weren't. Here's a man who was a, in a prisoner, and it says that in verse 1, I, Paul, a prisoner for the cause of Jesus Christ. He suffered more than any of us, and yet he glorified God. And I, I don't know Bill Workheiser's backstory, but I thank you for your witness that you come with your injuries, your loss, and yet you praise God. That's what Paul was doing. He came with all of his struggles and all of his pains and all of his problems, and he honored God. He praised God. But it says here that I'm on my knees, he says. Now, a Jewish man would pray in this posture. Palms up, and probably you've seen them at the Western Wall, rocking on the balls of their feet. That's because they are taught you worship God with everything you have, and so you move your whole body when you're praising God. This is not Paul's position in prayer in this passage. He is on his knees, he is on his face, because he is begging God, he's pleading with God. He's in a supplicant posture before God for this, this prayer that he's praying. And what is it? Well, if we read all of Ephesians, we will come and understand that his greatest urgency is that the body of Christ would have unity, that we would be united. Paul saw a world in which there was an abundance of political turmoil. There was economic injustice. There was corroding morals. There was division and hatred. Does that sound familiar to you? He also knew that in Christ... All of this could be overcome, indeed had been overcome, past tense. But Paul is making it clear that the church needs to unite under the leadership of Jesus Christ to make the witness and to do the work to bring the kingdom of God in its abundance here. Paul reminds believers then and now that we have so much in Christ, such an abundance in Christ that it is worth anything and everything that we might have to leave behind just to enter the kingdom of God, to live into the kingdom of God. Now, I love the grand images of this passage. I really do. But it might seem to us too unreal. It might seem to us unreachable. And if that is so, then it is because we have forgotten what is the nature of the church. The church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is a people. A people, but not just any people. Not a country club, not a social organization. The church is the people who have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, who are called into the body of Christ, and who become actually the temple of the Holy Spirit. Those aren't my words. Those are the words of the Bible. But that blows our minds, doesn't it? I, I have such a hard time thinking on that level. But I understand this, that we can be the church when we give ourselves to Christ. Can you think of a time in history when the love of God was needed more? A time when more people have surrendered to addictions and despair and loss of meaning? Now is the time, and we are the people. Oh, preacher, you can't mean me. No, I don't mean you, Manya. I don't mean you, I don't mean you, I don't mean you. What I mean is, yuns. <laughs> you guys, as my one uh, aunt-in-law would say, use. <laughs> you plural, that's what, that's what this passage means. It means us, taken together as the people of God. You in that plural sense, yes. Listen again to God's word 
that we find in that last verse of the passage that I read. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing together our closing hymn, Worship the King. inspirational playing. Will you join with me in the benediction? It is the closing verses of that passage that I read from Ephesians. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, now and forever. Amen.
for the way you look at me I was for the only one I see These very, very extraordinary Is even more than anyone that you were talking about Is all that I can get to you Love is more than just a game for two Till in love can make it take my heart Please don't break it, love was made for me and you All right For the way you look at me Oh, it's for the only one I see These very, very extraordinary Is even more than anyone that you are talking of Is all that I can give to you Love is more than just a game for two Love can make it take my heart Please don't break it Love was made for me and you For me and you For me and you Thank you very much Jojo was a man who thought he was a loner, but he couldn't last. Jojo left his home in Tucson, Arizona, for some California grass. So get back, I'll get back, I'll get back to who you once belong. I'll get back, I'll get back, I'll get back to who you once belong. Get back, Jojo. Get back, 
Johnny Cash song. What does Johnny Cash songs about uh, sing songs about? Pretty much trains in prison, right? It's like, yeah, all kind of stuff. And uh, unfortunately, never got to meet him. I was, I was doing a show, uh, a weekly show in Wheeling, and he was actually on the bill. And I was pretty excited. I thought, man, I'm finally gonna meet the guy. And he, uh, it was right when he started to get sick, and uh, they canceled the show, unfortunately. But they said when he used to play in Wheeling years before, they would book one or two shows and he'd end up selling out like five or six shows. They, they kept on adding and they'd, he'd sell out. So they would have two on Saturday and then two Sunday and then add one on Friday. And, uh, he'd sell out every one of them. So unfortunately, I missed it, but uh, we're gonna feature one of his uh, songs right now. <laughs> Well, I hear the train coming, it's rolling right in the bed. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. Well, I've been stuck in for some prison. Time keeps dragging on. But that train, it keeps on moving on down the sand and sand. When I was just a baby, my mama told me something. Always be a good boy, don't ever play with guns But I shop and land at Reno Just to watch him die When I hear that lonesome whistle I hang my head and cry on the fiddle. Well, I bet those rich folks eat in a fancy dot and cup. Probably drinking coffee. Smoking big cigars, I know I had it coming I know I can't be free But that train, it keeps moving And that's what tortures me Alright, one more time From this prison near that railroad train was mine But I'd move it all a little farther down the line Yeah, far from Folsom Prison That's where I want to stay Then I'd let the lonesome whistle Blow my blues away They let me know you were gone This isn't the plans I made Put an end to you 
walked down this morning in a road like this song. I just don't remember who to send it to. Well, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. 